All right, hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm Robert Arrington. You're watching Deer Meat for Dinner. And this is that big old boar hog that Sarah shot uh, two nights ago. I've had him in that big uh, 320 quart Ingle cooler on ice for the last two days. Now it's time to clean him. The really cool thing is I'm gonna show you the difference between a, using a long knife, that's a Silver Stag Woods and Water, and a short knife, that's a Silver Stag uh, Crown Skinner. So let's get started. This is how you cape and quarter a big wild boar hog. You're gonna be amazed when you see the shield. Okay, so a lot of people will cut right there using that Achilles tendon. I don't like doing that because you get so much hair on the meat. What I do is I'll come right here Make sure your knife is razor sharp and cut right around the foot, just like that. Skin that out. No, we're gonna do a pedestal mount. This is very, very important that you start off correct. Now, a short knife in this circumstance is wonderful. It's like, if you're playing baseball, it's like choking up on the bat, right? Good. And you can see there's a big tendon right here, right there. That's what I like to use. Stick your knife in there, make a nice little hole, and voila, you have a perfect spot for your gimbal. Using the longer knife, same thing. Razor sharp. Good. Now, instead of holding your knife back here, choke up on your knife, put your finger out there, and away you go. I think it takes a little more getting used to using a longer knife, but I uh, feel like I'm very comfortable with it, and so I love a longer knife. Good. Gimbal, gambrel, whatever you want to call it. Hook it in there just like that. All right, so it's always nice when you're doing this, especially if you don't have someone helping you, tie a foot off. Then he won't swing, he won't, you know, roll around on you. That's very important. Okay, so little knife on the right side, big knife on the left side. Let's get to work. What we want to do, start right at the base of the foot and follow your hairline right up. I'm just going to connect that. We know he's going to have to stitch this. We might as well connect that as well. Follow your hairline. Good, just like that. So now this is your chest. It'd be very easy for your taxidermist to stitch that up. Now, just grab your skin. <laughs> you don't wanna do that too often. That's, that's not good. That's a nick. And just take your time. You don't want a ton of meat left on the skin This is where I love a long knife. A long knife is nice for getting back into those hard to reach areas. And you don't wanna cut these hairs because those hairs will overlap where your taxidermist stitches and sort of conceal it. Now we'll switch it up and use my short knife and I'll explain you the differences. Now I've got a lot more control in there. Uh, it's a shorter blade, so it's a little, a little bit better on my hand. All right. Then right here at the base of the foot, we'll cut that. We're just gonna follow this right up there, just like that. 
Having a sharp knife is absolutely critical in this. Otherwise, you're just sitting there sawing away. So as you can see, my hand, I've, this shield doesn't want to bend. So I've got to get my hand in there. Now I'll show you why I like a longer knife. Now watch this. Look at that. always nice to have a skinning rack on the back of your truck because then you can just hop up on it. So here's where we have to start making our cape. We've already skinned out both hindquarters. Now we'll come up here and cut from the inside out. Okay. With the animal getting mounted, this is what the taxidermist will use. Because this is what you want your hog to look like when it's mounted. Not this. Now, long knife. Follow that rib cage. Be sure not to cut through your hide there. This hide won't bend. That's a shield. Like armor plating inside the animal. Use my smaller skinner. Still doing a dang nice job. Just, you get your hand in the meat a little bit more this way. <laughs> Thought I was kidding whenever I talked about a shield. Look at that shield. Look at that. That's what they use for fighting. The wildlife is the cruel world. I would love to know. I don't know, but a lot. I mean, look, he only has the frame of a small hog. And you can see, whoa, air went right through here, right through the pocket, through the heart, and out on the opposite side. I'm telling you, when it comes to shooting wild hog, it cannot be done any better than that. Not to mention she thought, shot through a very small opening and uh, I'm very, very proud of her. She's actually filming right now, so very proud. If you guys want to see the entire hunt, go over to this video over here on the other side. This is where your small skinning knife is not nearly as versatile and useful as your larger knife. Now, come over here, y'all. <clears throat> she was just asking how much the, uh, the shield weighed, it's a lot. Okay, so this is where long knife is very, very, very valuable when you're boning one out. You can just get right in here. Makes it too, too easy. When you're dejointing them, just it just does such a great job. Cutting out a back strap. You have all the knife you need to do this with. 
big healthy piece of meat. Normally I use my carver, but I don't have a carver. Big old huge section of ribs. everything with our short knife. Still very easy. It's not like it's the end of the world, but this portion with a short knife is much, for me, much more difficult. Whew. Big old back strap. Ribs. shoulder. Do you joint them? Again, still totally doable. Watch the, watch the difference with a long knife. Long knife, come right in here. Get it in that ball socket. indentation right there. Just follow that right down. Cut through your shank. Ham. Here's your another ham. you guys that's all she wrote I don't care if you like a longer knife or a shorter knife if you use what I just showed you caping and quartering your big wild boar will be very very easy I'm now gonna package this guy up freeze him and ship him out to my friend Bill Burns at Backlife Taxidermy in Kalispell Montana as for the meat we're gonna cook some here but Joey said he's got a couple of his employees that have been begging for hog meat, and I'm gonna take the rest to them. You guys, I love you, and I appreciate all your encouragement and your support. I hope you enjoyed this video. If this video is something that you don't enjoy, well, hopefully you didn't watch too much of it. Hopefully you can respect that this is our way of life and that, that nothing goes to waste. Very, very, very little waste. Um, anyway. Thank you all so much for everything. I love you. God bless. We'll see you soon, but we gone.